it's also related, of course, to the sense that, you know, history changed on that day. And, you know, to make manifest this notion of historical transformation with the destruction of this scale and the activity that was required at the level that it was, I can only imagine that everybody, as you say, had a sense not just of this sublime and awful beauty, but the fact that something enormous had happened there and that each of them was a part of undoing it or of turning the page or of making the next thing happen as a result of what had been done on September 11th. You're r absolutely right. The, the commitment on the part of the workers in there wasn't just to doing a job. It was to healing a wound. Everyone who worked in there was, and, and I met hundreds and hundreds of people over the nine and a half months that I was down there, who, who came from far away across the country to offer their help to be useful there too. And everyone understood that they were a team you know, players on a team, and they were doing something that contributed to the larger um, effort of, of healing this wound. And so there was a genuine compassion. There's a, a photo in here because it comes to uh, the nature of the wound, and the wound was very deep. Uh, you have a photograph of uh, the scenes uh, around the discovery of five firefighters in the North Tower stairwell. And the story also includes, at first, your exclusion from the scene by one of the firefighters who'd come to remove uh, the bodies of these fallen firefighters, and your reintroduction into the scene after you'd been chased away by one of the fire department commanders who understood the point of documenting this, as painful, uh, excruciatingly painful as it obviously was to all the firefighters mm. there. Um, can we hear a little bit about that moment? And I'm sure the site itself was filled with many moments like that, the retrieval of the <coughs> dead, the ceremonial removal of the dead, and also, of course, the recognition of what had happened yet again, fresh, in, in seeing this unfold right in front of you. You know, when I was down there, I would spend most days about 14 hours. So I would leave around 2 o'clock in the morning. Somewhere around 10 o'clock on that evening, I was fortunate for me. I was on um, Liberty Street, and I saw firemen running into the pile. Now, that was unusual. People were always in motion, but to see them running was a, a, a kind of excitement. And, and so, in fact, they were running from where Firehouse 10 was into the pile. And so I followed them, and we ran through the most dangerous uh, uh, environment because everywhere were these rebars and steel sticking up, ready to snag you and tear you or throw you down. I mean, it was horribly dangerous. It was still so new. But I followed these guys in, and we ran up over a hill, and I came to the crest of the hill, and I looked down into a hollow, and there was this cluster of 30 to 40 firemen and policemen, and in the center was this glowing light, and um, all the activity was focused on this, and it was such a remarkable scene to come upon in the darkness that I made a photograph from above, and then I... I just went down with everybody else, and I went right up to the front, photographing all the time. And um, I, a man came out of where the light was, which basically was a void in all of the rubble. They always called them a void, you know. And the guy came out and announced that there were five bodies intact in a stairwell in there, and that the stairwell was from the North Tower. We were standing in the South Tower. And when he said, the stairwell indicates they're in the North Tower, there was, I don't know if it actually happened, but I, had, I have this, me this sense memory <clears throat> that we all went like this, as if some hand of fate pushed us all back as we, as we created in our mind the fall of the building with the men in it 
flying around in that stairwell as it came to rest down in the ruins of this other place, mixed in with it all. And it, it was just one of those moments where a, a huge tenderness came over everybody as they, they so, sort of were crushed by it. And I started to make another photograph, and some guy, a, a fireman, sees my my helmet that's got an NYPD thing on it. It also had, you know, a few other stickers that were on there. <clears throat> and he grabs me by the arm and says, no photographs. You, you got to get out of here. You know, he said, you're an NYPD. You know, I said, no, it's only a label, you know. Anyway, he dragged me back up the hill, <clears throat> said, basically telling me no photographs. And I'm standing there next to a chief. And we, I look at the chief, and we're the same age. And I say, chief, I'm the only person in here making a record of this for the people of New York City. I said, do you see a fire department photographer here? He said, no. I said, I need to do this for history. Now, am I going to do this or not? And he, he, he had a paw like that, and he took me by the elbow, and he just took me all the way right back down there, and he said, this guy's dead. 